Okay, so on this video, we are factoring out the greatest common factor. So the greatest common factor, remember, is basically the largest common factor, clearly, um, of a set of terms. So let's look at 4x minus 18. So when we look at 4x minus 18, we are trying to identify the GCF first. So you want to find the GCF. So my GCF here with 4 and 18 would be a 2. So remember that 2 is going to be on the outside of a set of parentheses. Because remember, factoring essentially is just like us setting up a multiplication. Okay, so factors. Remember, factors are things that are being multiplied. And so if we're factoring, we are creating things that are being multiplied. So the vocabulary is very important. It will help you understand how to work the problem. Okay? So we are trying to work this problem, and we're setting up to see what was multiplied to create the 4x minus 18 with the GCF being on the outside. So we have the GCF. So essentially what we're trying to do is figure out what we multiplied 2 by to create the 4x. So the way that you figure that out is you divide, essentially is what you're doing, you're dividing the 2 into the 4x. Understand that that is a scratch work, essentially. Alright, so because you're trying to figure out, well, what did I multiply 2 by to create a 4x? So dividing is how you would figure that out. That's what the operation means. So we would get 2x. So then what would I multiply the 2 by to create an 18. So if you go with your timetables, you won't have to show the division of the 2, right? Or if you understand the process. But if you're un trying to understand the process while you're learning it, you should divide by that GCF. And that will give you the negative 9. And so 2 times 2x minus 9 would be the final answer. And when we have these problems, we can distribute and make sure we get back the original problem. And we do, so we are correct. And it's important to understand that the GCF is 2, which is why it multiplies back together. So, for example, let's look at this one. So let's look at 8x minus 12. So when we do 8x minus 12, the GCF would be 2. So when we take out that GCF, we get a GCF of 2, right? So now understand GCF I have as 2 is not correct. But I'm working it as a mistake because a lot of people make this one. So I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by the 2. So that would give me a 4x minus a 6. So if you were to check this, when you distribute, you would get back what you started with. But it's important for you to understand that if we are factoring out the greatest common factor, and when we are factoring, we are trying to break things down as much as possible, meaning that any of your factors that you have should not still be able to factor more. So it's like, is your problem, is your factor in its lowest term? So let's look at this 4x minus 6. Imagine... If it was 4 over 6, right? So 4 over 6 is not lowest terms. They both have and share a what? A factor. That factor is a 2, which means we need to break it down more to create a 2 over 3. And remember, the original was 8 over 12, essentially. So we're just imagining it as a fraction so we can understand why 2 times 4x minus 6 is not the correct answer to this problem. This is a factoring out the greatest common factor. So when you factor out, it must be the GCF. And if it's not the GCF, you will still be able to catch your mistake because when you look at what's in your parentheses, it's not lowest terms. The 4 and the 6 both still share a factor other than 1. And so then you would have to go back and say, oh, I used the wrong number. The GCF isn't 2. The GCF is 4. So then what we really have... is 4 times, and when we divide that 4, we get 2x minus a 3. And that would be our answer. Okay?
All right, let's look at this one. Negative 3y squared minus 6y plus 9. So one thing we want to see about this problem is that when we're factoring, we always want our polynomial to be in descending order. So descending order means, remember, that the degree, the highest exponent is always in the first position, the leading term. And then the exponent value should count down in order to 1, no variable at all, right? 5 to the 0, okay? So what we have here is negative 3y squared minus 6y plus 9. So when we look at this problem, because our leading coefficient is negative, you want to make sure when you factor that your greatest common factor also has a negative. So your greatest common factor, if your leading term is negative, your GCF should be negative as well, okay? So when we look at our coefficients, 3, 6, and 9, the GCF there would be 3. When we look at the variables, y squared, y, no y at all, so what's that mean? The only thing we can factor out of that is a negative 3. So negative 3 is multiplied to what? So what we're doing, we're dividing every term essentially by that negative 3 so we can identify what we multiply by. So y squared plus 2y minus 3. And that would be our GCF factored. Okay? eighteen x squared y minus nine x y so you pause it and factor out the greatest common factor all right so when we factor it the gcf should be nine x y so when we do that we divide essentially right the nine x y into each term so we get two then x squared over x leaves us with an x and y over y cancels out. Uh, then we divide 9 into negative 9 leaves us with negative 1. x over x cancels, y over y cancels. Or 9xy over 9xy is 1. But either way, you get a 1. And so this should be your final answer. And that's factoring out your greatest common factor.